Question 1. The position of a particle, a particularly happy particle, is given by x equals cos of 4t, where time is measured in seconds. To determine the velocity of the particle at t equals 5, we can calculate it by hand by differentiating with respect to t. To find the particle's velocity at t equals 5, we need to evaluate this expression for t equals 5. To calculate this expression, we need to set our calculator to radians and then enter it into the run mode. Or we can use our calculator to evaluate the derivative directly. On our calculator, t has to be entered using the variable x. So our answer is d, negative 3.65 metres per second. Question 2. We need to investigate f of x at x equals negative 1 and see whether the first derivative is equal to 0 or whether it is negative and whether the second derivative is positive or negative. To do this, we can evaluate the first and second derivative at x equals negative 1 on our calculator. We use f5 to get the second derivative. So we have that f dash of x equals zero and f double dash of x is positive. So the correct answer is B. Question three. In this question, we're given the derivative of a function f of x on a specific domain and need to determine how many points of inflection f of x has. To identify these points of inflection, we will draw f double dash of x. Now remember, we were given the derivative of f of x. So here, we only need to graph the derivative of f dash of x to get the second derivative of f of x. We will change the view window to trig and then adjust the x values so they lie in the domain given in the question. We will now look for points where f double dash of x is equal to zero. To be a point of inflection, f double dash of x must have a sign change i.e. negative to positive or positive to negative. The only point where this doesn't occur is this one, as it goes from positive to zero to positive. So we have four points where a sign change occurs and f double dash of x is equal to zero. So we have four points of inflection. Question four. In the question, we are told that the sample proportion has a mean of 0 0.15 and a standard deviation of 0 0.0345. We can determine the sample size n by solving the following.
This can be evaluated in our calculator as follows. Alternatively, we can just use the Solver app and directly solve this with our manual labour. As we can't have 0.12 of a person, the sample size is 107. Question 5. To determine the standard deviation of x, we need to first evaluate the mean as follows. Now, as f of x is non-zero, between negative pi on 2 to pi on 2, these will be the bounds of the integral. We can evaluate this in our calculator as follows. The variance of x can be calculated by The variance is the square of the standard deviation. So we find this answer corresponds with option B. Question 6. We are told that the amount of lemonade in a cup is normally distributed with a mean of 60 millilitres and a standard deviation of 3 millilitres. We want to determine how much lemonade, x, is in a cup, so that 80% of the cups contain more than this value. This can be written as, and visually looks like this. This probability can be evaluated in the stats mode on our calculator. So, the amount of lemonade required is 57.5 millilitres. Question 7. Our marble is moving in a straight line with a velocity v equal to 2 ln of t plus 1, where t represents the time in seconds since the marble passed through the origin. To evaluate the displacement, we can use the fact that displacement is equal to the integral of velocity with respect to time. We need to determine the distance travelled in 4 seconds, so So, in 4 seconds, the marble has rolled 8.09 metres. That is a fast marble. Notice here, we have used displacement and distance interchangeably. I hear you wondering, is that maybe against the laws of mathematics? Actually, well, maybe physics. Well, we are told that the marble moves in one direction, i.e. it doesn't change direction. 
So in this case, the distance and displacement are the same. So we didn't break any physics laws today. Question eight. To determine the equation of the asymptote of the function log base nine of x take three, subtract four, we need to determine which value of x makes f of x undefined, or as I like to say, what makes f of x mad? We know that an input of zero makes log x mad. So in this case, since we are dealing with log base nine of x take three, if x equals three, then f of three is undefined. So the equation x equals three, option C, is the vertical asymptote of f of x. Question nine, let the length of side AB equal x. Using the sine rule, we can write Before we enter this into our calculator, we need to set our calculator to degrees. So the length AB is 14.44, option B. There is another way that may be slightly easier to change our calculator from degrees to radians. If you go under option and then angle, you will see that there is what looks like a degree symbol, a radian symbol, and a gradient symbol. You probably won't know what that is yet. So if we want to calculate what we just did using this button, we would go sine of 37 and then we would hit that degrees button, which tells us, well, tells the calculator that the angle is measured in degrees. This method will work regardless of what your calculator is set to in the global settings. Question 10. We can solve this equation for x as follows. Alternatively, given we know this equation has just one solution, we can solve for x on our graphics calculator in the Solver app. Given we have a multiple choice question, we can use the options to set a minimum and a maximum for x. The options for x are between 0 and 5, so we will use this to set our min and max. Phew, we got the same answer. If you prefer to use the first method presented, remember that using the Solver app is a nice way to check whether or not you made any errors. To conclude, option C is the correct answer.